Stan Jibalisco here from the Black Hills of Dakota Territory, United States of America, continuing our little tutorial series of videos in regards to the book Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics, third edition, published in October 2013 by McGraw-Hill. You are looking at the Spiral Bound edition, Spiral Bound is really nice because it lays flat for you on your workbench. The paper is good heavy stock so it's built to last. It acquires no bugs or viruses, requires no boot up. It doesn't have a battery to recharge or burn out on you. And all that stuff, you spill your coffee on it and all it'll get is wet and stained, not destroyed like a tablet or a notebook computer might get. But what I'm going to show you here is figure 4-10. On page 63, a simple field strength meter for detecting radio frequency fields, figure 4-8. On page 62 is a pictorial diagram of that very same circuit. If you're a ham radio operator, maybe you've used one of these things. One of the features that this book has, the third edition, that previous editions didn't have but reviewers had asked for, was how do currents actually flow through these circuits? How do they actually do their thing and on page 64 of this same book you'll find a follow the flow blurb. There are a lot of those little blurbs in this book and uh, I added them because you wanted them. You the readers wanted them. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this diagram of a field strength meter for you now on quadrille paper. I've gotten into the advantages of using quadrille paper for drawing schematics. I'm going to actually go ahead and draw that diagram, redraw it, just as it appears in the book. There is an antenna, probably a short whip antenna will, will do the job here. Then there is an inductor. Now you'll see I'm using a slightly different inductor symbol than the book does. It uses a looped, loopy inductor. I'm using a non-loopy inductor. Either one will work. Um, I, uh, when I draw by hand, I prefer this. It's just a little easier to do. Now this little inductor, by the way, is an air core inductor, although it could be a powdered iron inductor if you wanted it to detect low frequencies. Anyway, you have a semiconductor diode like this. Then you have a micro ammeter, and that is symbolized by writing the little Greek letter mu, then an uppercase A, micro ammeter. This is figure 4-10. On page 63. It's really that simple. What happens here? with this circuit as it operates is alternating current flows in the antenna and through this coil. This current is rectified by this diode. Positive conventional current can flow with the arrow. Electron current can flow against the arrow. So what you tend to get is a positive polarity here and a negative polarity there, a rectified radio frequency signal. And that uh, microammeter will then register those weak currents, and they're going to be very weak. You'll only detect a, a signal with a field strength meter like this when you have a pretty strong signal and you're in the vicinity of your antenna. That's what radio hams use a field strength meter like this to do. A field strength 
meter. Now there are ways that you can improve the performance of this thing. Now remember the current can only flow, the conventional current can only flow this way. So you'd connect the positive terminal of the uh, microammeter up here and the negative terminal down there. You can improve the performance of this thing if you're willing to ground if you're willing to ground the other end of that coil. That'll give this whip antenna a ground to operate against and give the radio frequency currents a good solid path to flow through. Then you end up with a good solid voltage across that coil. The current, it, you'll improve the sensitivity of this thing to some extent. Another component that you can add is a little capacitor right here, and you don't want to make this capacitor too large in value. Probably 0.001 microfarads, something like that, depending upon the radio frequency, across here to f kind of filter the output of this rectifier so that the meter has an easier time dealing with that current. Sometimes these meters don't work so well with pulsating direct current at a high frequency, but if you smooth that out you'll get more like a battery current through this meter and that'll help it too. And there's a third thing you can do if you're so predisposed. You can add a variable capacitor here, right across that coil, and tune that variable capacitor so that the inductance of the coil, L, and the capacitance of this capacitor, C, which form an LC circuit together, will resonate at the frequency of the signal that you're trying to detect. That will help if you know the ballpark frequency that you're trying to detect and you don't want other signals at other frequencies to disrupt or uh, distort the reading that you get from this field strength meter. But that is basically the way that uh, currents flow in a circuit like this. You get a LC circuit like this, you get good strong circulating currents in there. It stores the energy as electric and magnetic fields alternately and produces what they call parallel resonance. You'll learn about all of that kind of stuff in my book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, if you're so predisposed to learn more about this wonderful art of electronics. So that's this book right here. The fifth edition is the current one as I'm making this video, but discussions of this kind of theory are in all editions of the book. Once again, the book Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics, I highly recommend it for those of you who are just learning how to read and draw these diagrams. Stan Jabalisco signing off. Until next time. So long.